Okay. Okay, as we um, gather here today once again for this Thursday, I don't know how, with what kind of heart do you bring today. Uh, as you see the title for today's uh, message, I think one common emotion that a lot of people, in fact, every peop, everyone went through is that of this worry and anxiety. And I believe that every one of us here today, whether we are young or old, uh, man or woman, uh, whether it's before or after exams, today actually I look at this topic of oh, it's just after exam we talk about anxiety, it doesn't seem to be so relevant. But actually then I realise um, the our emotions is so strange. Even after exams, we will still have worry and anxiety. You know, some of us during exam time we worry about exams. And after exam we worry about the results. Then now holiday we may be worried about oh what to do. We may be worried that we may be very bored. Or we may be worried that no one will spend time with us or no money for us to play. Or even some of us we can be worried because of financial issues. We can be worried because there's no job. And there's so many things for us to worry. Before we have a job, we worry about finding a job. After we got a job, we worry about whether we can uh, whether we can meet the expectation, the standards of the job. So people like uh, different walks of life, and some people they just worry because there's certain pending issues in their life that's unsettled. It could be certain illness that's still not healed, certain debts not paid, certain family members who haven't been saved yet. So we are all laid down by worries all the time, uh, regardless of our current status right now. So maybe in the past, I think some of us here, uh, when we live in the world, we may seem to think that you know, worry is a part of uh, common life. Uh, everyone in the world we worry, so it's nothing, nothing special or not, nothing abnormal for people to get worried. But the, the truth is, when Jesus came to earth, the first thing, one of the first thing he told his disciples is that it is not normal, it is not right for God's children, for Jesus' disciples to feel worried, to be anxious. Because why? Because right from the beginning, since the creation, when God created humans, God gave humans the authority to rule over all other creation, whether it's studies, whether it's relationships, whether it's financial. So God, Jesus, when he first came to uh, preach, the, one of the first things he told the disciples is, it is not normal, it is not right for people who are loved by God to remain in certain anxiety. And, but the thing is, ever since man is fallen, ever since man fall into sin, man separated from God, anxiety becomes an unavoidable part of life. It's like, there's no, there's no way people can escape from worry. And I can tell you last time I studied psychology, a lot, of people, a lot of people nowadays, they turn to psychiatrists, they turn to psychology for help when they are laden with anxiety disorder and thoughts. But I can tell you that psychology is not the full solution to resolve men's anxiety. And that's why when Jesus comes to preach his first sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, the heart of that sermon is to bring out the essence of the gospel that resolves all the problems of mankind. And when a person is fully reconciled with God, then he will be able to enjoy freedom. And most importantly, this freedom from worries. So let's turn to this famous passage in the Bible that we are quite familiar. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So here there's one very important word called therefore. We always say, you know, therefore is the link between this passage that we are reading today and the passage that we went through last week. You also remember what we, were, what we shared last week. It's about you know, serving only God and not money, storing up treasures on, in heaven and not on earth. So this therefore is, you can only have reason not to be anxious if and only if we are single-minded towards God. Because from the, moment, from the moment we start to look away from God and look into anything other than God, the financial necessity or anything else, then you'll be sure worries will plague you. A lot of troubles of life will weigh you down. So the thing is, in fact, you know, now our topic of the day is we should not be anxious. But actually, brothers and sisters, if right now, today, if our heart is not single-minded towards God, then we should be worried. 
we should be worried about our spiritual plight. If today we are not looking to God, but you are looking, we are looking at other things today. And later on, you re you realize that uh, the word anxious appears six times in this short passage. So this anxious, this anxiety is something that we need to eliminate by the power of the gospel. And actually, another meaning for this anxious, the word anxious, also means distracted. So. Uh, again, this passage want to point out to us that a lot of times worry is a major distraction from us following God. Worry is a major distraction from us enjoying all the love and the promises and the blessings that God intended for us. So worry is a major distraction for human, for, for Christian walk. And verse 26, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into buns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So there's these three words, sow, reap, gather. And all this points to the human preoccupation, human concern about storing up financial security. You know, you sow, you reap, you gather. It's all talking about money. But for us children of God, we need to get this assurance that if our Father in heaven gives birth to us, will He not also ensure that we survive well? Our survival needs are taken care of. And verse 27, And which of you? by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life. So, in other words, Jesus is using a question to point out this important truth that worry for blessed and beloved children of God like us, worry is redundant because we cannot even achieve the slightest thing such as adding one more hour to our lifespan by our worry. So there's no point to worry. And you know, some people, we like to indulge. A lot of times, we like to indulge in feeling anxious. We like to keep ourselves swimming in anxiety until we see certain outcomes. But Jesus here is saying that anxiety accomplishes nothing. In fact, a lot of times, if you affirm how you, uh, in, your, in your walk with God, you can, we can all affirm that, in fact, a lot of times, not only does worry not accomplish anything, but worry, in fact, makes matters worse. If you think about it, worry, creepers us to think soberly. When we, are, when we are overwhelmed by anxiety, we realize that you cannot think straight and you are so crippled in your thinking that even the remaining strength left in you is being robbed away so that we have no strength left to do even the right thing right now. So, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is to, is to point to us that the, a blessed child of God, we need to be mastered by the Holy Spirit instead of being mastered by our feeling of worry. And verse 28, Jesus continues saying, asking, and why are you anxious about clothing? So Jesus is very smart. He knows exactly what is always on our mind, what worries us. It's not, uh, it's not things of the spiritual world. It's not about the kingdom affair. But we, o we always worry about you know, what to wear. Maybe this applies more to the sisters, I don't know. But nowadays, brothers also worry about what to wear. So consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon. Solomon, if all of you are aware, he is the richest and wisest king in the Old Testament. Even Solomon, the great king, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the, the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? I guess to, to us, to many of us, we don't care, you know, what colour is the rose, what colour is the lily, what, what colour is the chrysanthemum, we don't care how the grass looks like. But if God even bothers uh, to dress things or living things that we don't deem important, that tells us how much more He will bother to provide us with the clothes that we need because we are so much more important to Him. Verse 31, Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. And very important is verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things, all these things which you worry about, it could be the job, a lifetime partner, it could be the clothes, it could be the finances for tomorrow, all these things will be added to you. And verse 34. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And who determines what is sufficient? It is God who determines what is sufficient. A lot of times, we got deceived by our feeling. We say, God, we cannot take it anymore. It's enough. We will die. But God is the one who determines what is considered sufficient troubles. And God who loves us 
will definitely not let us go through and bear beyond what we can bear. And in other, or more correctly, God will not make us bear beyond the kind of strength, the kind of power that He is prepared to give us. So today we talk about, I mean all of you, I'm sure most of you here are very familiar with this passage. So now as we, but the thing is, we need to ask ourselves, why is it that we can memorize this passage? But why is it that we cannot overcome the anxiety that daily enters our life? We know this passage inside out. A lot of times we, we really know this in our mind. But why is it that uh, a lot of times when life issues crop up, we are still full of worry? So we need to first understand this, this thing about anxiety. Why do we have anxiety? Even Christians, we battle with anxiety all day long, every day, all the time. Why? So we must first understand that behind our anxiety, there is always a spiritual background. Behind all the things that we worry about. Uh, because when a person is worrying, because already I mentioned, when God created humans, God didn't design us to be plagued with worries, to be full of anxiety. This is not the design God has for us. God wants us to enjoy His presence. God wants us to taste His sweetness and blessings. So the moment humans, we enter into anxiety, it means that from that moment, we are already under the workings of the devil. Workings of the devil, in the sense, you know, a lot of times people attribute it to very obvious factors. We are anxious because the exam is coming. We are anxious because the boss is pressing me. We are anxious because time is running out. We are anxious because my capability is falling short. So a lot of times it's easy for us to attribute our anxiety to all these outward obvious factors. But if you want to nip anxiety in the bud, we need to first recognize no matter what is causing your anxiety right now, there is a spiritual background to this. And so a person who is anxious is under the deception and is receiving the insinuation and is being controlled by the devil. And you ask, so what is the, what is the main focus? What is the main aim, the main focus of Satan's work? Whenever Satan attacks us, what is he trying to achieve? And that contributes to the spiritual background, which is, which is when Satan works on a person, no matter he used positive things, negative, negative things to uh, work on us, he only had one aim, which is to attack our relationship with God. And he did this by wavering our faith in God. So this is the this is something that we need to first bear in mind. Uh, just now we read in verse 32 saying that you know the Gentiles they are the one who pursues all these uh, physical things like food, drink, clothing. And who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are people who are yet to be reconciled with God. In other words, the Gentiles are people who haven't had any relationship with God. And of course, when someone, when a person is being apart from the assurance and the guidance of the Almighty God, naturally, they will have many worries in their life. They will, they will be fearful of illness, they will be fearful of poverty, they will be fearful of unforeseen accidents, they will be fearful of uh, they not making it, they not being successful. So when a person have not a relationship with God, naturally when they do not have the support of God, they will fall into this anxiety, worrying about things that they cannot control. And so when we say the Gentiles, they are busy pursuing all this uh, daily necessity, all these uh, physical needs. It just means that their preoccupation with running after all these things gives them this lack of peace. Because when they are pursuing something which is not God, meaning when they are running after some idolatry, when they are pursuing things that is not God Himself, naturally they will they will feel they will feel this worry that uh, can they achieve it? Or even if they receive it, can, will they lose it? And then, of course, when we read verse 32, some people say, uh, not, not all Gentiles are like that. Not all Gentiles, they are laid down by anxiety. Not all Gentiles, when they pursue worldly things, they are, 
they are very worn out. You know, there are some very optimistic Gentiles or there are some very optimistic, optimistic non-believer. You know, uh, when we look at them, they are very happy-go-lucky. They're very cheerful lot. You see that they do not know the spiritual truth. They do not understand biblical truth. They don't. E they are not even sensitive to, uh, to the fact that they need Jesus as their savior. But the thing is, you look at their life, they have very happy life. They have happy kids, blissful marriage, loving spouses, successful career, and they are very highly recognized by their bosses. So when we look at all these Gentiles and we say, hey, no, they are without Christ, they are without the gospel, and yet they are free from anxiety. But brothers and sisters, we must not fall into the deception of the devil because when non-believers, they are happy, even though they are without the gospel, it means that they are actually within an even more severe curse. A curse that, you know, they a curse that makes them not realize they need to turn to God, only in the end to realize that they have no part with eternal life and blessings. So when our relationship with God, even though we are safe, when our relationship with God also become torn down, become broken down by the work of the devil, you realize that you will start to worry over what the pagans, over what the non-believers, they worry also. So a lot of times, uh, even though we have all the promises of God guiding us, supporting us, we realize that the moment we forget about our relationship with God, we will just feel exactly like the, like the non-believers. Will, we will fear what they fear. We'll be worried over what they worry. And we also see from Verse 30, Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith. Meaning to say that anxiety comes from, anxiety's always got to do with little faith. When the person lacks faith, in other words, disbelief, it will naturally cause the person to worry. And we know that you know, this disbelief is a serious thing that we need to, we need to drive out by God's power. Because Whenever a person is overpowered by disbelief, you realize that disbelief will naturally lead to sin. If a, person, if a person cannot believe that God will provide for him, if a person cannot believe that God cares and loves him, he may end up stealing. If a person does not believe that God will give grace to the honest person, even though sometimes when we say the truth, we will face certain consequences. But if a person does not believe that God give grace to the honest, then he will lie. If a person does not believe that God loves him fully, he will start to be very self-centered. I need to accumulate my own wealth. I need to accumulate my own blessings. I need to accu accumulate my own assets because God will not love me fully. So when a person falls into disbelief, you realize that the next step is he will naturally fall into sin. So the lack of faith will make a person anxious. And we know that Sin will all the more make a person even more anxious because you know, because why? Because when we are created, God gave us this spiritual conscience. Whether we are Christian or not, we have this conscience in us. The moment we know we sin, we will strangely have this anxiety because we know sin break down. So okay, sin break down the relationship with God because God is holy. God has certain principles of blessedness for us. But when we sin, we know that we will surely have a breakdown in relationship with God and that will give us anxiety because we know that when God is not on our side, there's nothing to fend us. So that's why uh, there's a verse in the Bible telling us that when there is fear, sin leads to fear of punishment. When there's fear, fear is got to do with punishment. So when a person uh, know deep in his spirit that he will be punished he will be called to answer for his sin. Naturally, he will be, he will be swallowed up in anxiety. And, and that's why, you know, there's all these spiritual reasons. And that's why when Jesus, he, when, he proposed, when he proposed a solution to anxiety, Jesus didn't just suggest, oh, uh, if you're anxious, you go and look for the psychiatrist, or you go and look for some counsellor, or you go and look for the psychologist. Jesus didn't propose all these solutions, but Jesus proposed a spiritual solution in verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which we will uh, share later. So first of, first of all, we need to understand why do everyone face 
anxiety because there's a spiritual background to all these things and besides a spiritual background there is also another thing that create that causes men to be plagued with anxiety that is our own desires a lot of times uh, in particular we realize that many of our anxiety are caused by us willfully wanting what we desire uh, if you think about it a lot of times we are troubled because there are certain things that we want but we have not received or we cannot obtain that's why it makes us very it makes us very anxious it makes us very unhappy and troubled and even though our heavenly father he knows uh, what we need oftentimes we just cannot bring ourselves to trust that he knows better in fact god knows what we need better than we ourselves know what we need uh, you know some, a lot of times we thought we need the money for tomorrow now here right now i need the money that i need to use tomorrow i need to see it here today but a lot of times Jesus, uh, god may think no the money you need for tomorrow tomorrow you will come and in fact i was just thinking you know a lot of times we want to we want to be in control we want to know we, we want to be secured that we have what we need for tomorrow in our hands today but just imagine if god give you even if god give you the food supply you need for tomorrow you won't be able to swallow it today because you'll be so full by your breakfast lunch and dinner today even if god gave you your breakfast tomorrow your lunch tomorrow you cannot swallow it so a lot of times we thought we need we know what we need but god knows best what we need more than us so even for even for uh, us who are born again a lot of times we are so laid down with anxiety because even though we are loved by god god provides for us but a lot of times our life direction is just so detached from god the way we uh, our way of living our priorities in life uh, the things we pursue instead of pursuing after god we just pursue the idols and which resulted in our dra our faith being dry dried up and resulting in us being unable to see god taste god's love see his guidance and that's why we are so often being gripped by worry so uh, today god wants us to really realize of course there could be other uh, you know everybody have different situation uh, in terms of the concrete specific event that makes us anxious everybody differ but these are the two key things that always make us fall into anxiety the spiritual side that's the work of the devil there is also this uh, loss of relationship with god this uh, shaken faith and this hidden sin in us that is unresolved and also on the physical side there's also a lot of times our desires that is not fitting with god that makes us give us a lot of unnecessary trouble so then we ask ourselves so then we ask ourselves the more important question which i'll spend more time on today is then if we want to be we all want to be free from anxiety but the big question is how how can we be free from anxiety i'll just share four points and we will end today so a lot of people we it's a, it's a known fact we are all plagued by anxiety but not everyone have the solution to get out of this anxiety so you ask yourself okay anxiety or the synonym is worry so what is the opposite of worry as we seen in verse 30 just now the worry the opposite of worry is faith so if we want to be free from anxiety the first thing is we need to build our faith and how to grow that faith how do we grow that faith uh, we realize that if you look at jesus sermon he kept mentioning one thing in his passage today that when he when jesus told his disciples that you need not be anxious he often make a reference to the truth to the fact that they have a, they have a relationship with the heavenly father with the heavenly father and this heavenly father is not just any father as i mentioned father father equals to love 
heavenly equals to power. It's not just any father. It's a father in heaven who loves us, not against us, but who is also powerful to meet all our needs, to solve all our problems, and to lead our hand. So, we always say, you know, when a person is full of anxiety, naturally what accompanies that anxiety is also the emotion of love. So you ask yourself, what is the opposite of fear? Why is the so when a person is full of anxiety, it will be fearful. Why is the opposite of fear? Opposite of fear is love. And in in First John four eighteen, he has this wonderful verse for us to say that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And fear has got to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. So relationship, when we talk about relationship, it's all about love. Only when a person can taste, can be assured of God's love in our, our life, then this perfect love from the perfect God can cast out every bit of our anxiety. So, there's this promise, verse 32, your heavenly father knows that you need them all. So your heavenly father knows what we need. And he not only knows, he will give us in his love. And he's powerful enough to give us. So God in his love, he prepares different blessings according to what we need every day. So you think about it. So as we think about this loving father, we, we have thought of it, we have heard this kind of message many times. But think about it. Why does God create us? Does God create us to lay down, lay us with many, many worries? And why does Jesus go to the cross to die for us? Does Jesus go to the cross to die for us in order that we, we still remain in our anxiety today? So of course we know it's not the case. God wants us to be joyful and to be worry-free. Now you ask yourself, why does God not like his children to be anxious? Why does God not like his children to be anxious? Because as we confirm in our own experience, Every time, think about it, every time when we are anxious, what is your focus? Every time when we are anxious, our focus is surely not on God. Our focus will be on the things that we are worried about. Finances, a lover, children, health, job, whatever it is. Whenever, our, whenever we worry, our focus is not on God. So worry, as I said, is a distraction from God. It is the devil's scheme to divert our attention and focus from God. So in that sense, so in that sense, worry. Worry is a most terrible sin. Why? Because when a person worry, the focus is not on God. Why is it a terrible sin? Because it's a sin, in fact, even of idolatry. Because there is something in you there is something that you mind more than God. When we are anxious, really, when, whether we are anxious about the boss' opinion of us, if we are anxious about whether, whether we can get married, if we are anxious about whether we have enough money in the bank, then that thing that you worry has taken over God's place in your heart. And that thing that you worry, that we worry, becomes the idol in our heart. Because from then on, man's approval is more important than God. From then on, money in the bank is more important than God. From then on, the success in job is more important. From then on, whether I get married or not, marriage is more important than God. So, do, do you see why does Jesus place such emphasis that he need to he need to he need to mention anxiety, anxious six times in this passage? Because being anxious, I say it again, is a terrible sin. Because it's a rejection that God is the most important part of our life. And, and that's why, I mean, God understands. God understands that we are powerless. When we face the attacks of the spiritual world, when we face our own limitation, God understands that we could be powerless. And that's why God wants to save us out of this bondage of anxiety. And we, and we need to realize, every time when we are anxious, you won't be able to, because anxiety is at loggerheads with our relationship with God. So you realize, whenever we are an anxious, that will be the moment where you cannot enjoy God's love, you cannot see God's guidance, and you cannot taste God's power. 
And in fact, have you realized one thing? Every time when we are anxious, every time when we are anxious, we cannot even go into sober prayer. Yes, we can pray, but our prayer will be very distracted. We pray, but our prayer is full of muttering, full of complaints, full of just words and no heart. You know, when we are so sucked into anxiety and we lose sight of God's relationship, how God loved us to the extent that He gave us His one and only Son, we will just, we may be praying, but we are not making sober prayer. It doesn't make any sense to us. And so we need to realize that a lot of times, it is not our problem that makes us lose everything. But it is our anxiety that makes us lose it all. A lot of times, I say again, it is not our problem that makes us lose everything, but it is our anxiety, our, our preoccupation with the issue itself that we lose sight and lose faith in God, that we lose to taste the help that we can otherwise receive from God. So we need to first realize that actually everything we have today doesn't even belong to us in the first place. Your job, your weeds, your favor from men, your family, everything that we have does not even belong to us in the first place. But it is the loving God, I say again, it is the loving God who provided what we have today according to His love and according to His grace. So remember what we shared last week about Proverbs 38? When God gives us something or even when God takes away something, it is for our good. Proverbs 30 verse 8. Uh, no, God gave me sufficient so that I will not so that I will not disgrace your name, but do not give me so much that I will forget about your name and grow proud. So whether God gives us something, whether God takes away something in our life, it is all for our own good. good. And man is created in such a way where we must live in the provision of God's love and grace, then we can, then we can be happy and joyful. The moment we forget about God's promises, or the moment we cannot be convicted by the Holy Spirit in our heart, you realize that is the moment you become a helpless creature, being overpowered by anxiety. So our loving God, He, I say again, the reason why He died and resurrected is not so that we remain in our worries. The reason why He died and resurrected is not whatever, no matter how real your worry seems to you today. You know, some people worry because I actually really have a problem. I really have a, an illness that is not cured. I really am lo lonely. I really am not married. Or I am really uh, lack of money. I really am hated or disliked by my boss. You know, no matter how real your cause of worry is, God is telling us He died and resurrected, not so that we remain in this anxiety. Because this loving God who, gave, who have a relationship with us, He gave us a lot of promises in the Bible that tells us we need not be worried. Of course, I cannot list out everything in the Bible. It's so thick, so 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 long. But a few a few key promises that we can hold on to that the loving Father tells us why we need not worry. Because first of all, He cares for us. First Peter five seven, very common. Cast all our anxiety on Him because He cares for you. And then uh, another common one, Matthew Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you, all you who are weary and burdened, laid down with worry, laid down with anxiety. Come to me, and you will find rest. Because my way is easy, not your way, not your own desire, your own desire, your own pursuits that are weighing you down, your own dreams that are um, that are holding you back. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Eh? Hebrews, Hebrews thirteen six. Another one which quote Psalms, uh, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? So what can me if God is, and, and there's a lot in you know, Romans 8, if God is for us, who can be against us? So a lot of times people have this thinking that I will only find rest. I will only stop worrying. I will only be free from anxiety if I see a change in the outcomes. If I see a change in the circumstances, then I will find rest. A lot of times people have this idea, I will only be free from anxiety if my sickness is cured, if I find a boyfriend, if I get good grades, 
if I pass my exam, if my boss favors me, then I will not be worried. But today, based on God's promises, God does not want us to ground our freedom and our peace, our rest, not in the change of outcomes, but we ground our assurance of peace on the fact that we have a relationship. We have a relationship with God and God loves us. So uh, I say again, a lot of times it's very common. It's very easy for us to only be rested when circumstances change. Okay, it's nothing wrong about that because there's human tendency. But God wants us to realize how much He loves us so that we will not we will not just look out for the change in circumstances, but we will be rested and find peace just because He is for us. You know, some people say, uh, wow, some leaders of the, of the world, uh, whether it's the bosses, whether it's political leaders, some leaders in this world, you know, they like to inculcate something called fear so that their subjects will obey them. You know, certain kings, certain politi political leaders, even certain bosses in the world, they like to instill fear in people so that people obey them. But Jesus did just the opposite. He came, he died on the cross, but this Jesus, our King and our Father in heaven, they want us to, on the contrary, they, they are our King, but yet they come to find us, to, not to instill fear, but to give us the freedom from anxiety. That is, that is real love. God doesn't just want us to obey Him by giving us fear, by threatening us, but He gave us His true love by wanting to set us free from all worry. And just like I mentioned, you know, sometimes sin causes us to be anxious because we know sin will bring about punishment. But the verse here, perfect love drives out fear. So even when we sin, we need not be anxious because perfect love can cover a multitude of sin. Well, then, of course, it's like everyone says, yeah, yeah, I know, I know God loves me. I know we have a relationship with God, but sometimes it's so hard. I, I know in my head God loves me. But when I live my life, I just can't help but feel anxious. When the situation comes, when the tides come, when the tsunami or worry come at me, I just cannot help but feel anxious. So how? I just know, I know God loves me. I know I have a heavenly Father who is powerful. So now what? Look at how Jesus taught his disciples on the practical side. Yes, it's hard. It's hard to, oh sorry, this should be B. It's hard to, it's hard to just suddenly or overnight be free from anxiety just by knowing I have a relationship with God who loves me. So now when Jesus, if you look at verse 26 and verses 28 to 30, Jesus said, if you want to find, you want to be free from anxiety, okay, the, the, the trick is look around you. Look around you, look at the birds. Look at, the, look at the grass, look at the flowers. In other words, in other words, observe. Observe. There are certain things, there are certain people, there are certain events that God causes you, causes you to encounter. Everyone is different. You meet different people, events, and things daily. So in other words, observe, be sensitive to what God is doing in your life. Oh, sorry, my handwriting is... I know the kids cannot understand my handwriting, right? Okay, okay. Be sensitive to what God is doing, what God is placing, what kind of events, what kind of people, what kind of things are happening in our life. And then, after you observe, you reflect. Remember Mary that we talked about in the earlier part of the Gospel? Mary treasured things in her heart. There are certain things that she cannot understand at that point in time. Oh, why did Jesus do that? Why did Jesus go uh, gone missing and then suddenly appear? There are certain things we do not understand, certain, especially certain suffering that we are going through right now. But you observe. Then you observe what are the things that God is doing in your life. You reflect, store this, treasure this in your heart. And then you confirm. Confirm means you cross-reference back to the Word of God. You cross-reference. You cross-reference. The Word of God said so many things. Uh, the Word of God said that uh, I will be with you. The, the, Lord, uh, the, the Word of God says, all things work for the best, for the good of you. When, you. when you observe, when you reflect, and then when you confirm, link what happened. Yes, I may be scolded by my boss this morning, but does it bring me any good? Yes, I may have lost a few, uh, I may have lost some money, I may have uh, quarreled with someone, but 
you confirm, reflect it, cross-reference that back to the Word of God. Does it bring any good in the end? And then, and then after you confirm, the most one of the more most important thing is you need to remember. R E M is a short form. Remember. A lot of times we confirm, confirm, we are very happy. Wow, God gave us grace. God has perfect will. God never forget me. God is still gracious to me. God is faithful to me this time. Wow, the thing that I'm so dreadful of, so scared of, uh, happened. I scared I cannot find a job. God gave me a job. I scared I will be lonely for the rest of my life. God gave me a partner. But we so, but after we confirm, we always forget very easily. So remember, especially if. Brian sisters, especially if right now you are going through certain tough times, especially if right now you are going certain going through certain ironical situations in your life that you cannot gel with God's love, cannot gel with the relationship of God, that you cannot gel with God's grace. Remember, Jesus said, "Look at the birds of the air." Sometimes you know, if you are the disciples, you'll be wondering, "God, I'm telling you about my concerns. Why are you tell me about the bird? The bird is the bird. I'm me. You know, I have I have to face people. People scold me. The birds don't have bosses to deal with. The birds don't have to fish. You know, the people will be thinking, why is Jesus telling me these kind of irrelevant examples?' But actually. Nothing that Jesus says is irrelevant, especially when you are in a paradoxical, ironical situation right now, when you cannot see any connection between your situation and God. This is where you remember, you observe what God has done for you in the past. You look at what God is, how God is still holding your hand. You may be like Paul, beaten but not dead, oppressed but not desperate. You know, so so observe, then remember. Uh, you know, a lot of time from time to time, we fallen humans, we really need certain reminders so that we can be free from unnecessary anxiety. So this is the first point. How to be free from anxiety? First of all, we need to build faith. Build faith on the foundation of our relationship with God. Build faith by practically observing what God is doing, confirming and remembering. Second, how do we be free from anxiety? The solution that Jesus gave us, as I mentioned just now, the solution, the spiritual solution, I told you that Jesus didn't give you the psychological solution, but Jesus gave you the solution. Seek first, and this is a common solution that we always come across. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Okay, and this always sounds very heavy on us, but the truth is, the key step to be freed from anxiety is to set the kingdom, is the, to set the kingdom as our priority. As I said, this anxiety is a distraction, excessive concern. I say excessive because it is all right for us to be concerned. You know, we all need to eat, to wear, uh, dress properly, to find work, and we all need to have certain basic necessities. So it's all right to be concerned, but excessive concern over earthly things. It's a distraction from the single-minded pursuit of God's kingdom. And this relates to our message last week about this single-minded eye, you know, uh, serve God and not money. And actually, when we realize that, every, if you realize one day that everything you have today is for the sake of God's kingdom, then you, you will be assured that whatever you need today, whatever you need on earth, God will provide for you. And so, here when we say, here when we say righteousness, righteousness just means we pursue in doing what God deemed as right, meaning seeking out the perfect way of God and follow it. Uh, like what Jesus taught us, not just obey the law, but even surpass the law. Now, seek his kingdom first. Kingdom, okay, kingdom, seeking the kingdom first just means that we center our life on the kingdom of God. Meaning to say, we need to let Christ be king in all parts of our life. And brothers and sisters, I hope that all of us can confirm, when will our anxiety stop? Actually, I confirm in my life that even though sometimes we cannot, we cannot have any control over situations, but our anxiety stops, brothers and sisters, the moment you let Jesus be the king 
in your food issue, in your clothing issue, in your marriage issue, in your job issue, in your life issues. The moment you let Jesus be king, be king in that issue, you realize that is the moment your anxiety will stop. So, when, because often we are anxious because we live as though we are someone without a protector. We live as if we are someone without a master. We live as if we are someone without a provider. That's why we are anxious. Because there's no one to fend for us, no one to protect us, no one to provide for us. So we need to find food for ourselves. We need to find blessings for ourselves. We need to think for our future. We need to plan for our future. So a lot of times we get anxious because the load is on us. Uh, it's like there's no one to guide us, no one, no one to lead us. Uh, but when you live as if there is someone above you, you can relax. Just like in this church, there's this pastor in front of me, right, above me, right? So I'm not so anxious as him. I don't know. I think maybe he's more... Like when something screw up in church, right? I will think, I will pray, but I will say, ah, thank God, there's still a pastor. Anything he carry. So I just support, support. I just do as what he say. Hopefully, I do as what he say. So it's like, but if there's no pastor, if today pastor forever tell me one day he want to go to China and permanently in China, then I will start to sweat and be oh dear, oh dear, how? Ah? Anything happen? Any, any, anybody is ill? Anybody got trouble? Anybody uh, go into difficulties? Then I will be there sweating, oh dear, how? But never mind, now I'm a I'm preacher, I'm full time. But not to say that I totally don't care, but I won't be so, you know. So as we follow God, it's not that we don't care, but that's God above us. But the thing is, whenever we live as if we are our own master, we are our own destiny planner, then that's where we will sweat and that's where we will be anxious. And today Jesus used a very interesting concept of Jesus today in his whole sermon on this worry part, he used the interesting principle of using the greater to assure the lesser. When we look, he used it multiple times in this whole passage, using the greater to assure the lesser. That, like what he said, um, food, no, not food, body. Body is greater than clothes. Food, eh, no, no, not food, life is greater than food. So why do you worry? So there's this principle that Jesus cited for us. There's, there's, you know, sometimes when we are worried, of course I cannot downplay the realness we feel when things attack us. But here, you know, Jesus is like saying, life is more than food, body is more than clothes. In the same way, eternal salvation is more than, so eternal salvation is more than earthly needs. So, if God, so this is similar to Romans 8.32. So if God has given us His one and only Son to save us eternally, redeem us from sin and a dreadful hell, why in our right mind do we think that if God has given us even eternal life, even His most precious Son, why do we in our right mind fear that God retain from us certain things we need on earth, whether it's companionship, whether it's finances, whether it's whatever thing we desire. So there is this, you know, last, this is something later on which I find useful in my life because there's certain, there are indeed certain situations where you can't get what you want immediately. You can't see, you can't receive, you can't feel it. You can't feel the tangible thing you need right now. But actually, there's, I, I think there's power in this greater assure the lesser. Because every time when I've troubled myself also, then I think, if God has even given me eternal salvation, if there's anything He didn't give me today, will it kill me? Will it make me die? Will it make me utterly sad? So, there's this principle, greater assure. So every time when you also feel like you have no hope, when you have no answers, you think about what has God done even more for you. He's trying to say that, you know, he's trying to say that He is the source of life. He is the source of body. And if He has given us this life and body, why do we worry about the lesser things that we need? So, God promises us, 
if I already give you the eternal salvation that you need, then whatever you need on earth, I promise you, if that is what I deem as a legitimate need, if God deem it as a legitimate need, He will surely provide us. But of course, it is a need not for us to lead some comfortable life, but a need for us to glorify Him. So if God thinks, or if this person, if he is poor, he cannot glorify God, then God will not make the person a pauper. If God thinks that you are single all your life and you will be bitter and you, you cannot glorify God, God will not make you single all your life. And on the other hand, if God thinks that if this person need not have so much money in his hand, so that he will not be tempted to sin, and so that he can be a comfort to others in a, in a needy situation, then God will allow the person to have a simple lifestyle in order to be a glorious testimony for those who are also not so rich. So God, He is the provider of everything we need to glorify Him. So in other words, if we want to, if we want to be free from anxiety, we need to let Christ be King, which is we need to get our priorities right. Meaning to say, meaning to say, as we live day by day, you know, there's a lot of things we can think through. Later in the forum, you can think through. There's certain things specific to each of us. We can ponder deeper to how we can, if you really want. This is not a rigid commandment, but this is a commandment to help us be set free from unnecessary distraction that hold us back and give us undue anxiety. So for example, in a day, what, how, do we, how can we set our priorities right? For example, in a day, no matter how busy we are, we can, have, we can first have this principle that no matter how busy we are, you know Singapore and Malaysia, we are all always very busy. Staying in Singapore means we are very busy. But no matter how busy we are, the motto of our life could be prayers must supersede, must supersede tasks. This is just one example. Everybody can be, can be different. You, we, we can based on how well you know where you are always under attack by Satan, where your weaknesses are, we can, you know, then no matter how, no matter how tired we are, time with God, time with God, supersede time for the self or time for others. Some people like to hang out with friends, chill out, or some people like to sleep and sleep and sleep. But sleep, nothing wrong with sleeping. But the thing is, if you really want to set your power, actually, you know, sometimes I tell myself, Ah, you know, sometimes uh, if I truly think that be, having the priority right can free me from anxiety. You know, last time I'm a, someone who really likes to sleep. Oh, okay, I, I like to sleep, but I'm also someone who cannot wake up early in the morning. So wake, I can even forego make up. You know, I'm very vain, right? But I can even don't make up in the morning just so that I can sleep five more minutes. But then one day I realized if I sleep five more minutes or five, five more minutes more or less, and if I can pray just by waking up five more minutes, earlier and can change my whole day, make me be more anxiety free, then why not? You know, sometimes my mind is just fixated. I want to sleep just five more minutes more. I have five more minutes I'm also happy. But the thing is, you sleep five more minutes doesn't make much difference in terms of your le energy level. But it makes a lot of difference if you just save that five minutes, you pray to God, you set the priority right, and then the whole day your spiritual eyes are open and then you can enjoy God's, uh, you can be more sensitive to observe what God is doing and you are more uh, you're more able to confirm His grace in your life. So there's a lot of areas where we can think through. Not everyone is like me. Some people, some, some people they can wake up at 6 o'clock, wow, drink one coffee, read the newspaper, then I don't know how come they can do that. But you know, everybody is different. So some, some other ways to prioritize, you know, a lot of times weekends are very precious, but we can always have this, you know, the Sunday worship is more important, more important than other, any other activities. For the week so that you set yourself right and or even in decision making decision making god's will supersedes my desire there's many many things i can quote but it's for us to it's for us to if i want to quote we would we will have to share until 10 o'clock so it's for us to internalize within ourselves test within yourself you know yourself best and then you set out certain things that you know if you if you can just make some slight change, it will turn your whole life around. It will make you be a more worry-free person. It is worth, worth it because God says, when you seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, then 
all these other things that we need will be added to us. And then three, the third thing we need to be, uh, the third step in removing our anxiety is, you know, we need to be faithful today. So verse 34, each, sufficient is each day its troubles. And we have to be very careful here. A lot of times people, when they read verse 34, they're very happy. Oh, do not worry about, worry about tomorrow. But Jesus here, he's not giving a blanket promise. Do not worry about tomorrow. Because why? Before verse 34 comes verse 33. So only if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then you have reason not to worry about tomorrow. So a lot of times people just jump to conclusion. Wow. You know, some, some, uh, so Jesus doesn't mean uh, that we can be all lazy people. Oh, we just be lazy. Don't need to plan ahead. Oh, this is my favorite topic, planning ahead. Okay, then don't need to plan ahead. Don't need to do what you should do today. You know, like some students, they may look at this verse. Oh, good what? We are Christian students. God says, do not worry about tomorrow. So relax, lah. tell the parent, relax. Lah. Don't need to study for exam. God say tomorrow will be fine. You know, I don't need to study. Tomorrow will be fine. Just relax. Don't need to worry. Some, some students, I don't know whether they will even tell the parent, why are you so no faith? Ah? Huh? I mean, God said, don't worry about tomorrow. Why you keep asking me to study? So this is uh, abuse of God's word. But the thing is, Jesus said, we need to still be faithful to our today. You know, to get ready for tomorrow. Meaning, today, the work, okay, the trouble for today is the preparation for tomorrow. Getting ready for tomorrow's exam is your trouble today. It's what you should do today. It's your work, it's your job for today. But to sit for the real exam, for example, is your trouble for tomorrow. So um, that's for students. For people who are working, uh, to, to, pre to prepare a presentation today or to prepare for a job interview today is my job, is my trouble for today, the preparation part. But to face the inter interviewer tomorrow, to face the pre presenter or the, the audience tomorrow, that is tomorrow's trouble. So, Jesus is not saying, when Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow, Jesus is not saying, do not prepare. Jesus is not saying, okay, Jesus is not, Jesus is not saying, do not prepare or do not plan. But Jesus is saying, do not worry about the outcomes tomorrow. Some people plan, 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 then they're very worried about tomorrow. If I prepare my message, oh, tomorrow will the audience receive grace? They plan, plan, plan. So let's say, so, so that's not for us to worry about. A lot of times, you just worry about getting your preparation done well today. Uh, so the present is more important than our tomorrow. God's charge, God's demand for us today, uh, God's demand, is God's demand for us is today, not tomorrow. So we, we, God is a very reasonable and realistic God. So we cannot dream, uh, we cannot dream that we'll be close to God tomorrow if you're not praying today. So God is very realistic. I mean, God is a supernatural God, but he's not just a very impractical and, a, and a, you know, illogical God. So you cannot imagine, you cannot imagine that uh, your friends and your family will all become Christians if you do not tomorrow, if you do not evangelize today. And you cannot expect to see blessings tomorrow if you are not even willing to cast your anxiety on Him today. So, God is very practical. So again, even though God tells us, do not worry about tomorrow, God is telling us that if a person today is seeking God, is really resolute to serve God alone, then his tomorrow Will be taken care of by God. You know, God can surprise us. God really can surprise us. What we do not have today doesn't mean that we do not have it tomorrow. So, uh, we really need to be faithful today. Meaning, today you pray what you should pray. You attend the church meetings that you should attend. Today, you trust the promise of God that He has given you. And today, you affirm, you test, and you search for God's perfect will to how far your faith can bring you. I mean, not everyone can affirm perfect will like pastor, maybe, or like Jesus. But you, based on your faith level right now, you, you affirm to the best capability, your best abil uh, ability, how much God has revealed to you. You test and approve and follow His 
perfect will and then God will have mercy on you so it is really important that we enjoy living in the grace of today because why because today is the today already belongs to us but tomorrow doesn't belong to us tomorrow is not here yet we are not even sure whether i'll see tomorrow i mean by god's grace then we'll see so do not worry about things that is not even ours yet tomorrow is not ours but today is ours and when tomorrow comes god's grace will also accompany tomorrow so god just now there's this verse sufficient is each day its troubles so god does not give us too much trouble for our every day meaning each day's trouble is just enough you know it's just enough so you do not fast forward some people like to bring forward you know, I, want, I, want, I want to bring forward tomorrow's tomorrow's load for me to carry today but no god says each day has sufficient trouble so we don't bring forward we don't bring forward to tomorrow's um, worries into today otherwise you'll be so burdened you know every time i prepare sermon right I will, i'm always telling my husband oh yeah thank god i finished today's sermon then we'll start to worry about oh no next week what am i going to share i have died already everybody is so familiar with gospel i what new things can i tell them or even worse sometimes it's like oh i finished this sermon yeah very happy oh no pastor is going to mission trip oh dear this three weeks i don't know what to share it's like uh, three weeks from neither here nor there it's like oh oh no so then you realize I start to bring tomorrow's problem into today but God says you just focus on fighting today's battle first because today's battle is enough to wear you out if you really fight with all your heart and mind because Satan is not an easy target so a lot of times God wants to tell us that actually tomorrow when tomorrow come God will give us the strength accordingly even though I cannot see like you know now I, I, I finished this message for today but I still cannot see frankly I still have no idea what to preach uh, two weeks or three weeks later no idea at all I cannot see what message I have to preach but the thing is you know why what is it about tomorrow that makes us so anxious you ask yourself what is it about tomorrow that always makes us so anxious no matter how smart you are how rich you are because tomorrow ca carries with it one element you do not know you don't know what's happening tomorrow so you, this do not know is very fearful but that's why we need faith because faith is the assurance of what we do not see so non-christian do not have that kind of assurance because this assurance only comes to someone who have a relationship with god so and then uh, so a lot of times we need to realize one thing when we worry about tomorrow you realize that you cannot even enjoy what God has provided for you today. Uh, for example, if you are worried, if you are anxious over money, then you cannot even enjoy the abundance that God has provided for you now. Just like I mentioned, uh, if I worry about whether I have food tomorrow, uh, I cannot even taste, I cannot even enjoy the taste of the food that God has given me today. And so yes, uh, yesterday I just came across this quote by this person called Kori Ten Boom. She says that worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow, but it empties today of its strength. And I totally resonate with that. I say again, worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. Just like Jesus said, how many of you when you worry can add any hour to your lifespan? And but worry it empties today of your strength. You know, if I, if I, today when I prepare, when, if today I'm preparing for this EYF message and I keep thinking two weeks later, what do I share for Sunday service? I'll be so distracted that I don't even have any strength to prepare for this EYF message. But, but God is, God just wants us to, God just wants to train us and grow us in our faith in things we cannot see. You know, humans, uh, we have this, this tendency. We like to feel safe. We like to feel safe today about our tomorrow and i find something very weird you know people like to feel safe about our tomorrow and the weird thing is even if people who are okay today you know for certain people today went well today nothing uh, no problems arise everything is smooth sailing strangely they will still be afraid that tomorrow there will be some failure tomorrow there will be some setbacks to tomorrow will be some lack uh, as i was preparing this uh, one very one very i think is very obvious and very relevant example from the Old Testament that I can think of 
is the story of the Israelites and the manna in the desert. If you can think about it, this is very interesting. As I read that story again, the Israelites and the manna, you know, God wants to test the Israelites' faith in his provision and in the not worrying for tomorrow. So, you know, the, they complain, hey, uh, there's nothing to eat here in this desert. So they complain to God, God say, okay, okay, every morning I will drop, I will rain, I will rain bread for you. But you must be sure, do not collect more than you need. Every person, well, actually God is very gracious. In the Bible, says every, everybody collect 2.8 kilo of bread. Suitable, I don't know why one, one person can eat 2.8 2 kilo of bread. Everybody collect 2.8 kilo of bread, nothing more. So you collect for the day. Then some Israelites, they're very kiasi, you know, they're very scared, they are very anxious. So God really said, do not collect extra. Do not keep until tomorrow. So you all know the story, right? So they keep. And then tomorrow, yee, so smelly, full of maggots. So get a shock of your life. You open, you think you have a sumptuous bread, then it's all full of maggots and very, very smelly. And God just wants to test them. See, I told you already. Why are you so scared? I told you, do not worry about tomorrow. Every day I'll give you new bread, 2.8 kilo per person. But then you still want to keep extra eaten modi, modi. And then, then the very strange and funny thing happened. You know, Sabbath day for the Jews is they are not supposed to work on the on the Sabbath, right? So God said, okay, okay, but for Sabbath I, I give you concession. Uh, for Sabbath, so on the sixth day, uh, you can collect double portion. So everybody, eh, sorry, not 2.8. Everybody is 1.4. So on the sixth day, everybody collect 2.8. A 1.4, 2.8, 2.8 kilo. So, so that you have sufficient for the sixth day and for the seventh day. And then some people, again, they worry. You see, they, they say, I don't want to. I already collected, those who collected from day one to day five, collect extra, turn moldy. So some people, they don't collect extra. So, so it's very funny. It's like, sometimes, so it's not about, you know, so they, when they don't collect, so they have nothing to eat. It's like, God, then they go, so, so Moses uh, in the Exodus is written, some people, Israelites, on the seventh day, God already said, I will not rain anything because you're not supposed to work on Sabbath. Some people so, still go out of their houses and wait for the bread, but no bread rain down. So it's not about, brothers and sisters, it's not about how much you have. It's not even about whether you save for the next day. It's about whether you obey God. Because God can change, you know. God sometimes say, Oh, for now, day one to day five, you don't save. But day six, you can save because day seven, you're not supposed to work. But people just take things in their own hand, use their own intelligence. So, you know, whether we are anxious or not, it's not a matter of our wits. It's a matter of how much we obey God. If you obey God, you can be sure God will not fail you because God is always faithful. You know, some people, when they are worried, they will say, No, yeah, God is not bad to me today. Uh, I mean, you know, some people when they are in difficulties, when they are going through certain challenging and tough times, they will say, yeah, God, not bad. You know, today I still have enough to eat. Today I still have enough to spend, even though my m money in the bank is very low already. Uh, today I still can survive at work, even though it's so tiring at work, I keep overtime. Oh, but I survive myself at work. But then they will always say, yeah, God is not bad today, but tomorrow leh, tomorrow leh. Tomorrow, uh, I may not have enough food. Tomorrow, I still have to go back to face the yucky job, face the face of the boss, irritating boss, and have to do the same old things again. What about tomorrow? But brothers and sisters, we need to understand, God is not just a gracious God today. He is also our God tomorrow. And He's also a gracious God tomorrow. So God wants us to really look to Him. And a lot of times, in fact, you may even, okay, a lot of things I didn't write here. You just listen and I don't know how to write so many things. So, a lot of times, when we sleep, uh, when we sleep tonight, sometimes we feel powerless. You know, I don't know, like sometimes when we sleep tonight and we think of our tomorrow, we feel we have no strength to face tomorrow. But I tell you, and a lot of times because of this, we are anxious. Ah, tomorrow, jiala la how? Tomorrow, die already. Tomorrow, oh dear, oh dear. So many things happening tomorrow. And then we feel out of control. I always say, when we feel out of control, we feel anxious. But the thing is, God do not expect us to be strong today for our tomorrow. All He wants you to have is faith for tomorrow. Tomorrow, short form. God does not expect us because God says, Sufficient is each day its troubles. And God gives us sufficient strength. God designed, the way God designed us, just like the way God designed our stomach. One day you can only swallow three meals. I mean, if you swallow more, you, you may become fatter or <laughs> against the... So, 
God designed our stomach. Every day, this the amount of intake we can take. So same thing for the troubles. We don't over we don't over take in troubles that don't belong to today. So God don't expect us to be strong, to have the strength for tomorrow's trouble. But God wants us to restore faith, faith for tomorrow's issues. So it's not about whether you have control or not. We feel anxious when we are out of control. But when you have faith that God is in control, then your anxiety will leave you. So God gave us assurance. As your day are, so your strength will be. And God promised us, just like the manna who came timely every morning, He promised us that His mercies are new every morning. It will not fail us. Today, you may not see how God is going to help you for your tomorrow, but His mercies are new every morning. This is God's promise. Okay, so be faithful. So today, just do what you should do, and you will, God will prove His faithfulness to you tomorrow. Okay, and then the fourth, this is the final one. Okay, and, this, and the fourth, fourth method of how we are to remove anxiety from our life is prayers. Prayers. And the, wonderful, and the wonderful promise that God has given us on this issue is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Shall we turn to this passage and I will read to you. Okay. Prayers, I'll not say a lot because prayers, if I go into it, you can take 10, 10 sessions. But, but prayers, this Philippians 4 will suffice. Do not be anxious about anything. It could be anything that bothers you, physical, spiritual, real, or even perceived. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be known to the God who is your heavenly Father, powerful and loving. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You cannot understand why you still have, why you still have peace when you have financial difficulty. You cannot understand why you still have peace when you are so busy at work. You cannot understand why you still have peace when you are struggling with an illness. But the peace which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. So I pray that this will be our assurance that this is God's promise. Every time we turn to Him with prayer, He will give us, He will, he will work in us. And actually, prayers first changes our heart first. Meaning, prayers, before prayers even change our situation, prayer will change our heart in giving us the peace of mind first. And when you pray, we need to know that God will be touched to work from His throne. The moment his children pray, you know, just like a parent, a parent can ignore a lot of calls, a lot of SMS, a lot of emails, but when the child talks to him, he will at least respond. You know, last time my boss is very busy, uh, director of prisons or what, so wow, very busy. So, but every time the, the daughter email, they're not, don't see, they're not, don't, don't reply. So, God will be moved, God will be touched to work from his throne every time we pray. And you can be assured that when God works, it is far more efficient, far more powerful, far more effective than we working ourselves, than our busy labor. So, Max Lucado ever said this, no one can pray and worry at the same time. No one can pray and worry at the same time. If you pray and you still worry, it means you have not encountered God. Your prayer is still not complete yet. Your prayer is still a prayer being interjected by a lot of Satan's thoughts. So no one can pray truly and worry at the same time. So prayer is a time where we convert our troubles into God's problem. We need not, as I said, we are someone with a protector, with a provider, with a boss above us, with a father above us. So prayer is a time where we convert all our troubles into God's problems. Okay, so today I'll end here. Uh, I know anxiety is something that we struggle with every day and it's something that we really look forward to, to resolve. But, and God and Jesus, today He not just give us 
the instruction not to be worried. He gave us the way how not to be worried, how not to be anxious. So as we think through today's message, especially later on in the forum group, maybe we can discuss among ourselves and reflect within us. What are some usual things that make us worry? Or other, in other words, what are the things that distract us the most? Uh, what are the things that make us very anxious? It could, could it be some unresolved sin, just as like I mentioned, sin could cause anxiety. Is it because of some unresolved sin that we haven't come clean with God? And that's why it makes us very anxious, gives us a lot of fear of accusation and retribution. Or is it because there are some battling desires in us? You know, there's a certain way that I want to pursue, but we somehow feel that that is not God's way. And we are very stubborn, and that's why it makes us very anxious. Or is it because we have been entertaining Satan's entertaining Satan's words too much and that's why it caused and we have been playing with Satan we are befriending Satan more than we are befriending the Holy Spirit you should think through what's the stage everybody is different so think through what is the usual stuff that distract us most that worries us most and second we can discuss how can we practically set our priorities right today such that we can better seek first his kingdom and his righteousness so that we will be free from unnecessary anxiety. So just now I mentioned some examples, like, you know, there's, uh, there, all of us have different things. Maybe there's certain practical steps you can adjust in your schedule. Or is there anything that you have been compromising? Like, you know, uh, instead of setting, instead of prayers supersede tasks, are we compromising in setting tasks over prayers? Get things done first then forget about prayer or is there so as i said there's certain things we need to think through plus minus five minutes of sleep is no much difference but it's a world of difference when it comes to spiritual strength so we we can all think through whether there's practical steps within us that we need prayers and we need further encouragement okay so let's pray father god we thank you today for your comforting message once again you assure us that as children loved by you there is no reason we need to be anxious because god you created us you call us and you die for us not to make us continuously worrying but lord help us to be able to reconcile our relationship with you so that once we see you are on our side we can have the assurance that our tomorrow our today are in your hand and there's no need for us to worry because you are the faithful God of Israel who gave Israel the timely manner and you are also the one who will provide us with everything we need timely so Lord we I pray that you will bless our forum later that everyone will receive grace through our mutual sharing and encouragement I pray all these things in Jesus name Amen <laughs>